So when you come up um, to the hive, the first thing you want to do is exactly what we're doing. And that is, we're just looking at it. Like, is there traffic coming in and out? Which there yeah, is. There's, there's a, a lot of bees going in and out all day. Yep. Um, the other thing, and I don't necessarily expect to see it uh, on January 1st, but uh, during a lot of the times of year, you'll see some bees going in and out that have what we call pollen pants where they look like they have like bright yellow saddlebags. Okay. And that's where they've been out gathering pollen and they're bringing it back into the hive. Okay. I haven't seen any yet, which isn't, like I said, unusual. Well, there's probably not any pollen around right exactly. now. Exactly. It's all in the air and we're breathing it and getting sick from it, right? It's now not that, on the flowers. That black rectangle there, there was a water bottle sticking in there and I had to take it out to move it, yeah. to move the hive over here. Yeah. And so and what I'm they did there. I'm wondering if I should put it back. No, I wouldn't. And it probably wasn't water. It was probably syrup. She was probably feeding them. Maybe uh, she yeah. didn't say. And it, right here, what they've been, what all that is, they were propolizing the uh, feeder to the entrance there, because that's that's what that's what they do. They propolize everything. And I what imagine. What do you call it? Uh, propolis is the name of the oh, substance. Oh yeah, Propolis. Yeah, they gather resin from trees and various plants, and that's um, it serves a lot of purposes inside the hive, um, and it's actually an amazing substance. They uh, they seal things up with it. It's antibacterial. It's antiviral. It's, oh yeah. Um, it's it's quite the thing. You might have heard of propolis throat spray. Uh, you can harvest the propolis from the hive and dissolve it in alcohol and make a throat spray out of it wow. for like when you're sick and stuff. Now, what about this blanket I put on here in the in the uh, tarp? Yeah. I put it on there the, the day before that big freeze we had. We had my seven degree temperature yeah. here. Yeah. And I put it on the night before. Should I go ahead and take it off? Yeah. Yeah. And and um, in Texas, generally, you really don't have to do anything to winterize a hive other than make sure they have adequate resources. You know, make sure they even, have enough even, honey and stuff. Even if, Seven degrees? Yep, I didn't do anything to any of my hives and every one of them made it. Okay. And you know, you think commercial beekeepers with a couple of hundred hives, they're not out there putting blankets on them in Texas, you okay. know? Yeah. So a lot of people, you know, just it makes them feel better, which is great, but uh, it's not necessary here. And the other thing you would want to be careful of is um, it, you wouldn't want to overheat them. Yeah, that's what I was worried about yeah. in this warm weather. Yeah. So I'm just smoking the entrance here a little bit. I had a friend call me today, or text me, and say, hey, so my neighbor keeps bees and they're, they're pestering us. How can we get them to not mess with us? And I said, well, what, what do you mean they're messing with you? Are they just present or are they actually stinging you? And she says, well, they're just flying around. And I was like, well, what would it look like if you just ignored them? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so she was going to try that. But, you know, sometimes it's hard with little kids to convince them to ignore a bee. And, you know, it's understandable. I was reading somewhere that it where it uh, talked about bees freezing in real cold weather, so. Well, and they would if they were outside the hive. And they certainly could, like, if it, this was a really small colony, they have to have enough bees to have a good cluster. Yeah. But, I mean, I, I believe what we're gonna find here is that there's plenty of bees in here, and if they have a good cluster, they'll, they keep warm. Like, if you were to take a, a heat camera, you know, like firemen use to see if the inside of a wall is hot, you know, and you were to point it at this during that seven degrees, you would see a big old ball of heat inside of this. Okay. Which is the bees. They're pretty fascinating. Yeah, they are. The more I read about it, the more fascinating they become. Yeah, no, it's true. It is very true. All right, so we smoked the entrance here. What was this for? It was this on That top. is a second bottom board. That's another one of these. Okay. Yeah, so maybe at some point she was planning on splitting a hive or something. Uh, or maybe these two initially were two separate hives and she combined them at some point. Who knows? I don't know. 
Now, do you put a queen excluder? Uh, yeah, excluder between the two. No, you wouldn't want to do it between the two because you want the queen to have full access to all of these. What a queen excluder is used for, let's say that it was um, uh, April and the nectar flow had started. You might want to use a queen excluder here and then you put a honey super on top of it, which is a, a honey super, which is a box that is it's just meant for the bees to put honey in. Okay, okay. And so it's another box like this. With... Except it's usually people use shallower boxes okay. for honey supers. You can use a deep, but uh -huh. um, so. You, you'd put it on top of both of these? Or... Right, you'd go box, box, queen excluder, honey super, okay. and, then, and then the lid. Now, can you get honey out of both of those? Well, you can, but the general rule in Texas is that this is how much you want to leave them to get through the winter. Between okay. baby bees, bees, and honey, this is how much you want to leave them to get through the winter. Okay. Um, so but then in the spring, when they start foraging and bringing in new pollen and making honey, you can you can get the honey out of one or more of these. Well, we're gonna we're gonna see what we find. Generally, how it would work is you just leave this, and then in the spring when the nectar flow starts, you would put on a honey super, and then the bees would build into that. And when the honey super is full, that's what you take, is the oh, honey super. Okay. Um, now, it could be, look at ladybug. Um, it could be that what we're gonna find is that like, maybe this whole top box is full of honey or something. And in which case, I think it would be fine for you to take a frame and, and harvest that honey just to enjoy some. Um, but let's just see what we find. Okay. All right, so we're gonna take this lid off. All right, it's not terribly propylized now, so that's good. Grab the smoker here. Do cold. they make, one of the questions I had, do they actually make the, the comb? They sure the do. Brain? They sure do. I'll show you. Yeah, the wind blew all that. Stuff. Yeah, I know. It's hard to do this in the wind. It's, now, this is really propolized down there. I have a. And that's why you'll be using your hive tool all the time. Because, yeah, you can tell this has not been opened in quite a while. And I think this is going to be... Be seal it with that uh -huh. propolis? Yep, they sure do. And it feels to me like there's wax holding this on, too. Like burr comb. So let's just see. It looks like it's all the way up to here. Huh? Yep, it sure does. You want to move the smoker over here and let it blow a little bit that way? We can. Ah, there we go. All right. So. Whoa. Yeah. So what we have here is, this is, obviously that's honey. Wow. So this is what's called burr comb. It's called what? Burr, B-U-R-R, -R, burr comb. Okay. I'm going to move the camera over a little bit. And... What it is, is these bees have gotten so full at one point in this box that they, they built comb through here, they built comb through here, and if they were in a tree, they would continue building comb up, up, up. And so that's what they're trying to do here. So it's full in there. Yeah, it, at least it was at some point, and I imagine, I imagine it probably is. I see a lot of honey in there. So, so what we wanna do is we wanna scrape this off because we want to keep our box easy to work with. Okay. So, is there somewhere you'd like me to scrape this into? Maybe you want me to put it right here, or is it good honey? Uh, I wouldn't try it right. I mean, yes, it's completely safe, but obviously there's bees all over it. Well, let's just let it go then. All right. Will they will they regather it? How about just putting it on the ground? We can. I try and avoid putting uh, wax on the ground because there's a pest called wax moths and uh, I don't want to I got you. attract them. So for now, we'll just put it right here. I can get a container if you'd rather. Yeah, you, you might decide that that's a better idea, yeah. For the inside honey? Yeah. You think we need to... Well, because you don't want to leave this just out here, so. Is that an indication that all the that, that all the 
panels are full. It, or at least it was at some point. So hives are gonna, they expand during the summer and then they contract during the winter. So this tells me at some point they absolutely were full. If you look at all that, that's a ton of propolis. Look at that. All that right there. How in the world do you harvest propolis? You scrape it off just like this. <laughs> the hard way, huh? Yep. I have a friend who's a relative out in West Texas sells propolis. Yep, yep. So yeah, that's look at all that. That's amazing. Is that camera getting you there? Um, I think so. We'll see. I'll turn it a little bit there. Oh, and you know what? I should look and make sure it's not on time lapse now that you mentioned that. So let me just look at it real quick. Shall I go get a con yeah, you would take the whole frame in. Should we decide to harvest? My wife will love that. <laughs> I mean, you get the bees off of it. All right, so now we need to scrape all of this off also. So this means that that hive is over full, doesn't it? it? At least at one point it was, and it, it may still be now. Look at all that. Mm -hmm. I bet that's outstanding, honey. Let me get a, would it be all right to drop that in a container and let sure. it drain out of it? absolutely. Let me go get a pan. Yeah, I'll wait. When they get real mad in the summer, they'll follow you a ways. Get some video of that. Now, one of the phenomenon that you'll see is uh, some of the bees that are eating that honey that you see right there. They may not be the bees from this colony. There can be wild bees that come. And they're like, hey, let's have a snack. You bet. If there's even a term for it, it's called robbing. Now there's gonna be some bees in this bowl. So we'll talk about how to deal with that in a bit. Yeah, that's where you just have to be really confident with your bee suit. And also, it's just a fact that you're going to get stung. Not every time. And like, I'm super careful not to get stung because, you know, the, I don't want my body to get sensitized to it. Yeah. And there's that's a shame we've got allergies. Well, there's lots of beekeepers that go through long careers getting stung with lots of bees that don't develop allergies. Not a given. That is just something. Well, I was stung two times as a kid. But... Well, and only two percent of people actually have an allergy to uh, to bee venom. Um, a lot of people say, "Oh, I'm allergic because they swelled up where they got stung." Well, that's just a normal reaction to a bee sting. Now, one thing uh, I don't know if you have a wedding ring on, um, but you might want to consider. Either not wearing it when you're in the bees, or not wearing what? your wedding ring. Oh, really? Uh, because if your finger gets stung, it can uh, swell up, and yeah. that can be a problem. So, just consider that. Yeah, you know, I was watching a video. Do we want to put this in there? Getting honey out of a working a hive. Yep. And he he actually had one hand without any protection on. You'll see that, and the thing is, you should suit up to your level of comfort. Um, like, I want to be completely suited up. I don't, I don't want to have anything, any vulnerabilities. Um, but there are people that work with no suit or with just a jacket or now, with just that a honey off of there going to be okay to eat? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. If I set it out and they just leave it, will the bees leave? Nope, they'll take every bit of it. <laughs> so what do? What you're going to have to do is like seal it up or something to where the bees that are in there will die. And then you'll just have to pick them. You have to somehow exclude the bees. From them. You can't smoke them out. Well, we can, we can just smoke them. It won't be 100% effective. But you can see they're pretty committed to honey. See that guy? He's getting... I say he, of course, they're all she's. Don't do that. Anyway, 
But you might want to, um, like if there's a plate or something you could put on top of that just to keep more bees from getting inside of it. It's there. Oh, wow, well, you could put that on top of it. Yeah, they'll die in there. Yeah. And that's another thing. Make peace with sometimes bees are going to die with a bee they are all about the colony as a whole they are not about their single solitary life they are about the survival of the colony and so sometimes working the bees sometimes some bees are going to die and that's just it's just like well every bee that stings you dies right yep except the queen if the queen were to sting you which is highly unlikely but if she were to sting you her stinger does not have a barb on it so it does not uh it doesn't rip her body apart when it comes out so she can sting multiple times but worker bees they they die when they when they sting you propolis so all of this is propolis all right? mm -hmm. Is that one stuck through there? Is it, is it stinging? I think it's stuck. I have to watch my wrists because, you know, the suit comes back from the... All right, let's see if we can get a frame or two out here. You want my puller? Yeah. So, first thing I'm going to do is use this to kind of break the frames apart from each other. So we got it over there? I don't see it. Uh, it's right there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I only knew because of the white handle. And then my hands have honey all over them. So this is a good time to say everything you work with out here will get sticky. Propolis is sticky. Honey is sticky. All of it's sticky. You can see they're kind of a little agitated. They're like, what is she doing? Now look, that's a whole frame of honey. Wow. Yep. That's what I figured. Yep. That's a beautiful, beautiful frame. So what we're going to do is, to give ourselves room to work, we are going to set this to the Should side. Should we stand that up in the... Uh... We're going to... Put it right there. And that gives us more room to work over here. That's why they started yeah. building in the roof, isn't it? Yeah. Should I get some new frames and put in there? Um, yes. Uh, let's let's see what we let's see what we find. Because it could be that they're all the way up here and there's plenty of room down here. Who knows? We're going to see. In fact, let me see. Oh, yeah. That's a heavy Well, they don't sting cloth, right? It's only when they get on skin. Oh, no, no. They'll sting cloth. In fact, I don't, can you see? There's a tab back there. Do you see, there's a tab. Do you uh -huh. see it? Do you see lots of little black things in it? Uh -huh. Yeah, I do. Those are stingers. Really? Yeah. I wonder why they concentrated on just that. Yeah. You know, brush it. Yeah, I'm just looking now to see what everything is. Another one? Hola, honey. You can see there's. I bet that was baby bees at some point. Still, mostly honey. Do you see how? shininess. That yeah. is 
nectar that is not yet honey. That's pre-honey. So that's interesting that there's nectar there. So that one's available for them to, to put stuff in, yep. just got laid in the last one to three days. Really? Yeah. So these these guys are doing super well. You don't need to worry about these guys at all. On this frame, you can see they didn't build these cells very deep, mm -hmm. so they're not using it for anything. Yeah. They've got honey up here. Did they? <clears throat> Do these frames come with those little holes, or do they make those? They make them. That's wax. That That's the bees beeswax. Mm -hmm. So they're, those frames are totally empty when you put them in? Correct. Here? It's just black plastic. I'll be done. Okay, what I see there is nectar. So there's honey and then nectar. You see this kind of looks like yellow? Well, I'm about 50% color blind. Yeah, well, that, that's pollen that they're packing in there. You can see. Okay. That's where they've packed in pollen in there. What happens to the ones that get squashed? They just die. And then? Do the other bees remove them? If they're inside the, if they're inside there, yeah. There's undertaker bees. Really? <laughs> that move them out of the hive. So they're, man, this is completely full of honey. Will they actually eat that much honey all winter? Well, I would not be uncomfortable if you were to take one frame out and scrape it off and do the crush and drain method and get some of this honey and then put the frame back. Because these bees are pulling in uh, nectar even right now. Like I would not, I would not mind if you were to take this frame in, scrape it off, crush and strain the honey. So then you'll have honey and you'll have wax and enjoy some of it. Yeah. Because I, I think they do have plenty. Probably the bottom is just a full. Probably, yeah, probably so. Now, um, what I would, if this were in my bee yard, I would not open up this bottom box 
for the pure reason that each one of these frames is about 10 pounds when they're full of honey like that. Wow. And so this is 100 pounds. It's very hard to lift off. And we've already seen that they have enough resources and we've already seen that the queen is laying. So we know everything we need to know. Um, and I mean, we can very assume that there's plenty more honey down there. So if you want to take a frame or two out, scrape it off, and then after it's clean, put it back in here, that's totally, they, I think they'll be totally fine and it would be a great introduction to beekeeping to have yeah, some would. of your honey so far. It you really know? would. Um, now I wouldn't leave the frame, well, it's the winter. I mean, if you took three days to put it back, and that's fine. Do you want to take this frame and another that frame and another frame and scrape them off? Let's let's take one that's full and uh, we could can we stand it up in that pan and. Uh, well, what I would do is is there's like a Rubbermaid container or something with a lid. Uh, boy, I, don't... I would put it in there and and uh, put the lid on because again you're gonna have to because no matter what you do. You're Brush them off? Well, we can sure try. And yes, they would brush off, but I mean, it's like trying to brush the water out of a shaking ship. You know, it just comes back so fast. Let's see. What other one do we want to take? This one looks good. That's a easy one. You want to smoke that a little bit? Sure. Is there any smoke coming out of there? Yeah, I can see it. It's just so breezy, you know. And that's also what the uh, the brush that I walked over here. This is it? Oh, yeah. So we can brush it off, but then we need to have something that's sealed off ready to put them into. So that's... Okay, let me go. Even if, uh, you know, you could bring a trash bag, we could uh, brush it off. I could zip, put it in the trash bag, and you could tie it off real quick. Bring two trash bags, one for each frame. Two? Okay. Yeah. We're going to do two frames? You tell me. Well, whatever you think. I, don't I think you're fine with two. Okay. I think they're fine. All right. 